So my name is Michelle Van Aken and I work with Plan International US. I will be your moderator during this webinar. With funding from USAID's Bureau for Humanitarian Assistance, Plan is supporting the LND Working Group in developing capacity building resources for child protection actors to support adapting to COVID-19 realities. So as part of this project for developing the capacity building resources, um, for child protection workers on COVID-19, we conducted a capacity gaps assessment uh, to determine what were the priority areas for field level colleagues for having their capacity built. Um, we heard from many country level colleagues that there was a strong need to innovate awareness raising approaches to the reality of realities of COVID-19. This was a challenge faced by many teams as gathering in person quickly became unfeasible. We therefore hope that you leave this webinar feeling inspired to brainstorm innovative approaches to awareness raising fit for your context and ready to implement innovative approaches. I'd like to introduce our two presenters. First, we will be hearing from Mahasan, um, a child protection coordinator with Plan International based in Sudan. Um, she will be presenting first. And then our second presenter, Ala, works with Haras Network and will be sharing a case study from Syria. Um, Many thanks to both of our presenters for sharing these experiences. Thank you and you welcome all. White Nile is the home of approximately 280,000 refugees. It was uh, essential for child messages of COVID-19 to be developed with the child and youth population. Also, while the government of Sudan allow essential workers, such as Colombian workers, to continue their work during the state lockdown. We had to prepare for services and messaging to continue should our presence to be distinct. While there was much guidance on COVID-19 prevention for others, there was uh, a little messaging target for children, especially for South Sudanese refugees of Nuer and Chulu. This is the only two tribes that come to White Nile State, Nuer and Shulu. Uh, therefore, it was essential for us to develop messaging that targeted refugee children with Nuer and Shulu background. And we had to show adhering to COVID-19 prevention and social distance guidelines. Together, this messaging and to ensure that to ensure the children were involved. Plan International worked with the Community-Based Child Protection Network, UNHCR, and CORE. CORE, this is the government's commissioners of refugees to organize a small competition targeting roughly 120 refugee children in the nine refugee camps. Children were invited to perform songs and poems using their own words to share how to prevent the virus with, the, with their peers. The best performance were awarded and cash prizes funded by UNHCR and all participants were given their materials by Plan International just because to keep them safe at their homes. Performances were also recorded and a week long radio from them funded by UNHCR was held. The child friendly message plays several times a day for one week throughout the entire state. Recording were also transferred to the megaphone and the Plan International social workers and volunteers then helped it disseminate this messaging through megaphone, which continuously to today. A Plan International in the nine camps that targeting uh, Awareness raising used three social workers in each camp with total about 27 social workers and uh, also 45 vo community volunteers, which is uh, five per camp. Challenge and um, uh, mitigation. Competition can be found and draw large crowds in normal situation. This is very good. However, considering the pandemic, we had to maintain appropriate social distance. So ahead of the competition, we arranged 
for distance between seating and volunteers were available for help appropriate social distance. Success. Children play a critical role in messaging and helping their communities stay safe during the pandemic. As a result, only three total cases were reported in the refugee camps, in, one, in only one refugee camp. Awareness raising through megaphone increased sustainability during COVID-19 and this important messaging such as COVID-19 and the sibling needs continue in the refugee camp come up to date. Community-based protection and messaging developed by the children themselves help us to, to achieve our achievement successfully. We recommended colleagues to always continue children, especially those who speak <clears throat> dialect that do not use have a messaging tolerance too. Uh, thank you. Great, thank you so much, Mahasan. We are so grateful that you're with us today and thank you for sharing these inspiring adaptations. I will now hand over the metaphorical microphone to Ala to share the case study from Harass Network. I will be presenting the Raising Awareness campaign that we had conducted during COVID-19 about child marriage and child labor, which are both sensitive topics and needs a lot of precautions before we had to provide to the communities. Just to give you a little bit of background on the situation uh, in Northwest Syria, the child protection situation during COVID-19 and even before COVID-19, the economic situation was deteriorating, which is directly impacting children's rights and their well-being and health. Uh, also, we have observed during the beginning of COVID-19 emergency uh, an increased risk factors for child marriage and child labor since the schools were suspended uh, as a physical and we had to shift uh, educational activities to online platforms, which allowed for increased school dropout and um, uh, decreased access to child protection services which resulted in a higher rate of children were observed in worse uh, forms of child labor, higher than ever before, and girls were at higher risk of child marriage, which was expected in uh, the mid-period of the uh, emergency and later on. So part of uh, the response for those two child protection risks, we had to provide an awareness raising activities uh, about child marriage and uh, child labor impact and alternatives to prevent it, which was actually a part of a program designed before the COVID-19, but as a part of uh, adapting it with the Save the Children International, we decided to emphasize on those two topics and go with them uh, with the higher than the target expected because of the observation that we saw in the communities. Both of the topics are considered uh, sensitive and may affect a negative re reaction in societies or impact the organization with reputational risks uh, if not uh, provided with caution. Since it was COVID-19 and uh, group activities were not uh, recommended at that time, we had to design the campaign to be provided online and through different uh, social media channels. What we thought of uh, is to provide them through the child protection committees and first to provide them to the child protection committee members. Then the committee members will help to uh, provide those sessions in the social media groups to uh, buffer the negative response about the material and enhance the acceptance of the contents. So building the capacities is essential to strengthen the child protection in local communities, which we, uh, what we thought of uh, uh, at the beginning. So we, uh, the, the child protection committees in Northwest Syria are the backbone to child protection response. And as the community spread and raised the awareness of the committees in adaptive and a contextualized way, uh, uh, which helped in buffering negative reactions of the, uh, in the community about sensitive topics. Uh, as we are discussing now, and providing child protection soft, uh, soft services uh, like uh, uh, safe education and referral. 
to with the restriction of group activities, we had to provide an online sessions. So that's a, uh, the, we first started with the provision of the content and designing, sorry, starting the designing of the content with the child protection committee members. Uh, so we consulted them on the content, how to provide it, how to tackle some issues and problems and challenges we foresee, and also to involve children in the uh, designing and uh, provision of the uh, activities. So uh, we did not only target caregivers or community members, but also targeted children. So all the content design had been done in consultation with the committee members to make it more sensitive to the context and adapt it to the background uh, of the culture. So the approach was successful in reaching more than 1,000 uh, 1, girls and boys and almost 5,000 uh, caregivers and community members, uh, which, uh, uh, which is more than the uh, original target uh, uh, audience. Uh, and what, wa what worked well is that the adapted content um, uh, in, in the context so before the beginning, we had some challenge in the Arabic context uh, to be um, sensitive or uh, appropriate for the culture. Uh, but after that, we provided those two resources online to be uh, used for other contexts as well. Uh, high participation and satisfaction rates since the community members were embedded in group chats and they facilitated some of the sessions and the discussions as well as uh, provided positive feedback to uh, redirect the discussions in a positive manner. Minimal negative feedback, we reach, uh, we, uh, it was really less than expected and uh, foreseen and there were uh, many any self-referral to case management services uh, through the uh, uh, social media and reaching directly to the child protection teams uh, embedded in the groups. Uh, also, most of them expressed that uh, the interest in attending similar sessions in the future and requested further details about sessions to be provided more on a broader area in their communities. For the challenges and how we mitigated them, because it was provided on social media and because it was sensitive for uh, the female participant to provide their uh, contact uh, information, we could not have a fully disaggregated data of the attendees. And on that, we could not also see the improvement rates because um, there were uh, some small quizzes provided and some questions just to test the knowledge of the participants in the activities, but not all participants participated because it was optional. But we could see the participation rate was very high in the group uh, chats. Since it was an online uh, intervention, we could not uh, measure the attitudes uh, after a while and see um, if there was a change in the attitudes in those communities. But other tools were used uh, by the community members in observing the uh, child marriage and child labor uh, rates in those communities. And there was slightly decrease in those communities, which was uh, a success uh, in that area. The projects period and uh, funding was uh, only for one year, which also did not allow for a whole study uh, and research on those uh, tools if were th they were effective uh, for the long term uh, and awareness in raising the awareness of the communities. Also, the funding for the child protection committees to provide innovative initiatives among those two topics is really short in, in that area. Idea. So in conclusions, child protection committees and community child protection uh, and community-based child protection networks are essential in introducing sensitive topics to communities and raising awareness about child protection in complex emergencies such as uh, Northwest Syria or other uh, emergencies because contextualization of the topic in, in sensitive areas is very really, uh, essential, which the child protection committees has succeeded to do. Hey, thank you so much, Ala. We were so grateful to have you with us today. And thank you for sharing these inspiring adaptations. We are now going to move into the Q&A session. So one of the questions that we have for you, Ala, was did you face challenges with connectivity 
And then as a follow-up question, how have you ensured online safety of children using this approach? This is a challenge that we have faced. That's why we uh, targeted children who had already the access and we facilitated their uh, online connectivity with the internet cards, uh, internet access cards. And since they were already attending uh, psychosocial support, online support uh, program with us. Um, uh, so we uh, seized this opportunity to provide those sessions uh, in, uh, during the uh, provision of the psychosocial support uh, uh, program. And uh, in the matter of uh, security, uh, we provided several awareness raising uh, to their care caregivers and the uh, children on appropriate use uh, to online uh, tools and online uh, platforms and uh, what are acceptable uh, behaviors from adults uh, uh, in uh, uh, receiving those um, uh, services uh, and what is not acceptable and when to report and what to report uh, to our uh, child protection workers. Also, we also uh, we always have uh, monitors uh, with the, our facilitators in the groups uh, just to um, uh, help in uh, any violation has been done, whether uh, through our staff or uh, not our staff, because the chat, uh, the group chat that we use are not exclusive to our organization. Uh, so uh, uh, this and other uh, precautions and measure has been taken to ensure safety, online uh, safety to children. Great, thank you. And then I just also have a follow-up question on how did children adapt to this new method of, of awareness raising over smartphones and were they really receptive to it? Do you think they preferred that to the traditional methods we usually use? So we all, uh, always adapt the uh, content to be child friendly uh, and uh, child friendly pictures and uh, in an easy language. Uh, so usually they have videos uh, that explain the content, then uh, the, uh, the facilitator will uh, uh, provide a follow up questions and facilitate some discussions with the uh, children. So they have been taught how to use uh, like, for example, um, how to record their voice if they are too young to write and uh, if they were uh, old enough to uh, write and uh, read they would uh, follow up on the group chat to um, uh, uh, to discuss the topic and to uh, ensure that they have understood the uh, topic itself great thank you so much Ala will you can continue to use these um, more digital approaches to awareness raising, you know, even when restrictions are lifted. It seems the COVID-19 emergency will uh, take a, li a little bit longer than uh, expected. So we will continue this approach uh, for the uh, next period and maybe after lifting the restrictions and um, after this emergency may be finished, um, we will go back to face-to-face -to -face as it's more effective and more uh, studied in that area of uh, effectiveness and quality uh, assurance on those topics. But uh, this has opened uh, an opportunity for child protection organizations to reach uh, uh, and at uh, attacking those uh, topic in a different way. Excellent. So kind of maybe like a hybrid type approach of using both. Um, and how did you train staff to implement these new activities? Exactly. So uh, at first they were trained on using those uh, channels and platforms uh, in effective manner. Uh, they had uh, different uh, uh, sessions on um, cybersecurity and uh, using uh, those channels in an effective manner. Uh, later on, they were um, uh, provided with sessions on uh, adult learning uh, methodologies and uh, children learning methodologies. And we have focused on online learning and how uh, children uh, re perceive uh, different topics in different uh, uh, ch uh, online channels. Uh, uh, and after that, uh, in each uh, topic, when we uh, plan to provide it, we uh, conduct 
several sessions, uh, whether with the technical, their technical supervisors or uh, with the HQ. Uh, so we start with provision of the content to them. Then uh, we have different uh, learning circles with them just to uh, ensure that they have understood uh, the content and they are able to answer different questions and uh, different uh, uh, concerns about the topic when they are providing them to the uh, community. Great, thank you so much, Ala. Mahasan, I'm interested in hearing um, how whether you will continue to use any of these adaptations you have named um, when the pandemic is over. When we started the campaign of awareness raising, we brought health cadre to the camps and train the community base, child protection network, and all child protection mechanism in the camp. Accordingly, we start announced for the competition because we are guaranteed for children participation. About 120 children are participated. And then we selected the who are uh, better practice song. And then we record these uh, songs. And uh, after that, we give it to Radio State. And then the radio state start broadcast the messages through the radio. Uh, then we took what took these uh, messages also in a flash disk and put it in the megaphone and then transfer in the camps. The messages start to be to be sent in all camps by by two languages, Nuer and Shulu, uh, and the children hear their voices in the megaphone on daily basis. Uh, they sense that the ownership because they develop the message themselves. Uh, the other things uh, for the other, uh, for the adults, for example, we, we use also flash messages that are developed by adult people in the camps. Up to now, the megaphone is running, and uh, I think it is a uh, yani good uh, practice because uh, up to now, no cases of COVID-19. Uh, just last year, we have three cases in one camp, and they are adult people. Thank you. Thank you so much. And with that, thank you everyone for joining today, and we hope you found this very informative and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.